I have received an enormous amount of emotional and incoherent responses to my previous video with only one guy actually tackling my data but got quickly overwhelmed by my response and could not write back. The rest of incels who have not even watched an eighth of my video on average bringing down the total amount of view duration of a 25 minute video down to just 5 minutes basically had spammed the entire comment section with their typical nonsense groupthink and strawmanning my entire video and not tackling down its most important points. Of course I had some positive comments from high IQ incels and incel adjacents, but most of them however were very emotional, with just one person actually tackling my 18 studies, textbooks and articles as well as 3 books that I have brought up. Pretty pathetic coming from those claiming to rely on empirical data in their reasoning. In this video I will not, as in the previous one, be pandering to incels because that it's not even worth the time judging from the backlash that I got on my last video, so if you are an incel and want me to pander to you, watch my last video. But for now I'll make a few things clear to anyone currently typing a smug comment under this video. I have never said that looks don't matter or are not among the top 3 most important qualities for women. I've never said that looks are not the most important factor on Tinder and other social dating apps where a woman prejudges male's desirability basing solely on his looks as she has no access to other factors and is very selective, as well as the sexual market as a whole is skewed in favor of women, providing them with even more choice. I think it's obvious as a day and I have admitted it. Third, I have never advised anyone to hit the gym or take a shower hour or just be confident bro or better bucks. And I'm not a red pillar or a pickup artist, I have simply stated the objective reality of what determines one's sexual value. My video had one normative statement, that is work on yourself and don't be focused on women. I have never said that anyone can get a woman if they work hard, clearly some people will be left out without a woman and I'm not going to pretend that confidence or some other external factors is going to fix all of that and guarantee your partner. What I have actually argued for in my previous video was that looks matter to men more than to women, looks matter more in initial physical attraction and less in long term dating, looks are not just physical but also are determined by an extended phenotype and are influenced by status and things such as the social dominance hierarchy. Next, women lose their looks and fertility faster than men who on the other hand peak at around 45 in their sexual desirability. Status combined with phenotypic similarity or alone is more important to women than looks. Now, in this video I'm not actually going to prove any of those, for that you'll have to watch my previous video or just read any book on evolutionary psychology or sexual selection, instead this video will be dissecting even more bullshit incels had made. That includes with Waffle's latest video, the beta box alpha fox theory and online dating following with a message to incels. But for now, let me remind you of today's sponsors, which are history memes official and history quizzes, two telegram channels designed for those interested in history, the links will be provided as always in the description. Now back to the topic. In his latest video, Wheat Waffles had made a series of assertions that one may classify as a form of disinformation. There were a couple of claims. Women care for looks as much as men do, according to a speed dating study. Females are more likely to tip attractive male servers than males tip attractive female servers. And he had reiterated a ridiculous theory straight from the depths of red pill called Alpha Fox Beta Box, which apparently supported by the rate of single motherhood and rates of male virginity. I'll start off with women care for looks as much as men do argument which was taken from a blog post on Kegel.com interpreting the speed dating survey from Columbia University that had ironically enough reached another conclusion which was in line with evolutionary psychology, concluding that men care for looks more than women and the most important factor for dating initiation for women was race. The study in fact found that men care far more about physical attractiveness compared to women. So do you agree, based on the results of that study, that study directly contradicts your claims. 
Yeah. It's simple. You sure. could, yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. it, it contradicts it. Yeah, go on. If, if, if it means that much to you, honestly. Funny enough, even if we assume that this study had concluded that looks are as important for women which they are for men, which is not true based off the study and previous studies I have referenced, it cannot be generalizable as the sample size is taken from a private university where a social status of men and women was similar. Moreover, it lacked the other criteria that influences women's choice to select a partner, which may be used as a proxy in another parameter such as looks or intelligence. In reality, higher socioeconomic status can offset physical unattractiveness in males, but not in females, in addition to females being 1000 times more sensitive to salary than males which is in line with the evolutionary psychology, but you may say, sure, they may be with them, but it's not because they are physically attracted to them. Well, in that case, you should watch my previous video on that topic. Anyways, the second thing was that male to female server gap, where Wheat Waffles claimed that women tipped more attractive male servants than males paid attractive female servants, and that women are the real sims as a result of that, which again is contradicted by the actual study, but since his viewers never read studies, I'm going to go ahead and create a nice chart from data extrapolated from this same study that he hasn't read yet still references. As you can see, there is one variable that is missing, how much men tip attractive females, and I could not find the number in the study, only in Wheat Waffles video claiming that it is 55 cents more, confusing it for the p-value. But in any event, it was observed that females tip more attractive females than they tip attractive males, if we are not talking about absolutes, but rather in the percentage points from the bill almost by a factor of two. So unless Wheat Waffles is claiming that male customers simp for attractive male servants and female customers simp for for attractive female servants, the point is disregarded. Finally, I now come to the alpha fox beta box theory, which argues in a nutshell that women desire sexy men to have children with them and then rely on beta providers to support those children claiming that this is their evolutionary strategy, where a woman would subconsciously or consciously have a child in her 20s, so that after she leaves the chat or the chat dumps her, will rely on a beta male provider who will raise her children. And there are already many issues with that theory. The first issue is that alpha fox and beta box category does not simply exist in the real world, with the exception of some extreme cases, and is mostly a phenomenon of the red pill and black pill imagination that is not present outside of their circle jerk. An attractive male as an attractive female will typically be also financially successful, intelligent and developed in other ways as a good body typically correlates with a good mind. With the exception of extreme cases, as I've mentioned, where a mind is highly developed at the expense of the body. It is a stereotype that there are extra smart beta males financial providers and dumb alpha chads who know nothing besides uh, sex. If Ansels were right on the alpha fox beta box theory, then we would expect physical attractiveness not to correlate with money and intelligence, unless of course alpha males and males with money compromise a majority of our population. Those people are rare and moreover beauty correlates with money and intelligence both in males and females. The second issue with this theory is that although gold digging behavior is somewhat prevalent, studies by Elizabeth McClintock and others seem to prove that attractive people go for other attractive people, intelligent people go for intelligent people, and successful people go for other successful people. A phenomenon of rich beta males and very attractive females does not seem to be represented in the studies that I've looked at. Moreover, if it was in fact present, it takes another level of confidence to support that if in fact it occurs, women in those relationships cheat on their husbands with 99% of the time with a low income chad. What actually happens is the exact opposite. 
men feel more entitled to cheat as they grow richer and they do cheat more. The final support in quotation for this theory is the phenomenon of single motherhood, for which with waffles almost blames women and presents it as a proof that this is women's strategy instead of focusing on the reasons for single motherhood, such as out of wedlock births, husbands leaving the family and other factors such as the government, socioeconomic status and pulling pulse control. Moreover, he conveniently picked the data until 2010 to prove that single Single motherhood is on the rise and correlates with the supposed female dating strategy, while if he was more honest, he would update the date to at least 2018 and see that in fact single motherhood is in decline. But no, it's all part of a female strategy to have sex with a chat that would then leave her or she would leave him so that she could be alone for 5-10 to 10 years until she magically finds a beta male orbiter who would provide for her financially. Well, if that's the case, there should be a lot of empirical evidence to support this hypothesis besides your black slash red pill logical constructs. And when I mean empirical support, I'm talking about mean or average female behavior and not some gold digging extremes that you think can be extrapolated to all of female behavior. Another claim he and many other incels make is that apparently most people today are meeting online and then assume that they are meeting on OkCupid, Tinder and other dating sites without actually looking more into it. The reality is that 39% number is taken from one survey and it is a number of those who have just met online. Think of Facebook as a prime example. Moreover, this survey is contradicted by other surveys and according to a survey by YouGov, only 13% of relationships were formed through online dating platforms and dating apps. Although this relationship is more pronounced in mid-20s with 21% of people meeting online, this is not near the level that incels claim it is. Another survey claims that about 8% of people have met on a dating site. Perhaps what we really need is an accurate methodology and a large sample to properly answer this question and determine how many people are really meeting online. But I am more inclined to reject the first survey as often close friends can talk on Facebook and meet there. Anyways, if you're still here and did not run away crying about me to your influencers, I'll share an interesting fact with you. According to a meta-analysis of about 6 studies, unattractive people seem to not understand that they are unattractive, rating themselves way higher, perhaps partially due to their lower levels of intelligence, while attractive people underestimate their attractiveness across all 6 studies. Just some food for thought, considering that a lot of incels and especially their thought leaders are objectively above average looking people yet seem to think that they are ugly. But it's not a coincidence that their thought leaders are good looking. Bad looking people are not usually intelligent and although beauty is highly genetic, so is intelligence and personality, although to a lesser degree. Despite insults claiming that those can be mastered, sure you can be more malleable with them but there are certain limits you can't push through. So if you are already physically unattractive it will not be a stretch to say that you are also stupid and vice versa. If you are attractive, you are probably smart. So if you have excelled in one of those two or three categories, you have actually excelled in all those three categories to a lesser degree, but again that's just some food for thought. But anyways, that's about it. If you wish to argue with me, send me studies or debunk my studies, but if you wish to write crap in my comment section, you can go ahead, but by doing so you will not achieve anything besides outing yourself as an idiot that is not just physically unattractive, but also is lower in intelligence.